I want to share with you my way into the discovery that um, the artificial intelligence can be creative. This is a long way, um, and um, here you will see different approaches uh, which you can also um, use by yourself because most most of these approaches are available. And um, so, uh, shortly to my background, I am not a coder. I have no um, no um, so I so I have um, no backgrounds from the machine learning or deep learning. I am coming from uh, academic. Um, area and from cultural studies uh, but everything right now what you can do with um, creative AI approach you can do um, without any knowledge of coding and this is what I want uh, to impart today as well so um, let's dive in into the way of artificial creativity um, <clears throat> so let's begin with my journey I want to, uh, so for the first, I want to quote uh, a famous AI expert from MIT. Um, AI is still an incredible complex problem. Right now we have no technology that, can, that we can actually use to control an entity that hasn't been programmed to behave the way we say it should. It doesn't mean that um, AI can behave itself in some uh, surprising ways, especially if we let it um, create in um, unsupervised way. And this is what uh, what I'm interested in, how to let computers, how to let artificial intelligence to create without human interference. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, my so the beginning from my journey started with um, Ross Goodwin. Uh, he is famous, uh, so probably mostly famous for his um, work on this short movie um, Sunspring, uh, which was created, so the screenplay was created by AI, uh, created by um, Ross Goodwin, and um, in this uh, short movie we, uh, was acted by, um, by famous actors like here uh, Middleditch. Um, Another experiment by Ross Goodwin was, for example, Word Camera, um, a system which could um, make a photographs from the reality and to write the poems about these photographs. Like it, it detected um, the images uh, and objects within these um, uh, photographic realms and transferred it into the poetry. Then uh, he wrote as well um, a poem. Uh, no, I mean a book, um, One the Road. And One the Road was a very interesting approach. He drove with a car uh, from, I think, south coast, no, um, so from um, east coast to the west. And this car was equipped by um, webcam, by GPS sender, uh, by um, microphone. And um, so the system detected all the places they were driving along. Um, it um, looked up into the Wikipedia. It uh, listened to the um, to the conversations within the car, and everything, all this information, was converted to a big road movie in form of a book. It, it, this is pretty interesting experience to read the interpretation of um, this way across America uh, created by AI. Um, and so, um, for me, um, uh, but for me, the most interesting was his essay uh, of series or of essays, "Adventures in Narrated Reality," where he applied different uh, approaches of AI uh, for the storytelling. And uh, it was for me like a kind of uh, eye opener because uh, he proved uh, and showed um, so shown um, with these essays that um, using AI. <clears throat> you can create entire stories, entire worlds, and this was very fascinating. Um, fascinating. So um, the next step was um, Google Deep Dream. Um, why next step? Because um, previously um, AI was used for object detection, for example, uh, in visual way. Um, but Google Deep Dream researchers um, made um, and next step, 
not only uh, AI could detect images or detect objects within an image, they also um, AI can uh, could also interpret what it sees and also modify the image into something completely new. So it was the first step to the visual um, to the visual creative approach of AI. Uh, so uh, Deep Dream worked um, using the pareidolia effect. We know, so everybody knows this effect. Uh, this is um, how our brains work as well. Um, so for example, this is um, the Mars phase, but of course we know this is not a Mars phase, this is a rock, um, um, this is uh, like um, a shadow, um, and light play of a rock formation, but our brain uh, detects the, f the facial uh, features in this image and we detect the, Im uh, the face, even if there is no face anymore. The pareidolia was um, our um, survival method back to the Stone Age, because um, it was better to misinterpret a bush with, um, with a tiger than to, um, to, to let a real tiger without notice. That's why our brain was so sharp, uh, seeing faces, shapes, specific shapes in, in our environment that we could um, survive, so to say. Um, AI works in the same way because AI is trained on images. It's, it's trained on visuals. And so uh, it, it can detect the, uh, the shapes and uh, it can interpret the shapes. But um, what if we use uh, or apply Deep Dream on, say, Mona Lisa? So this was uh, Mona Lisa seen and created by Deep Dream, recreated, so to say. For us, we can see some shapes of Mona Lisa, but of course, if we look closely, we uh, can discover wild creatures uh, like coming from um, um, a painting by Bosch or by Bruegel or by Goya, um, and we see something very wired, so to say, uh, so, something uncanny. So I tried, <clears throat> I, um, I tried Deep Dream <clears throat> um, to apply uh, to apply on my own user peak, and this was my first um, very painful way to install such such system on my computer uh, because I'm not a programmer. Um, but after uh, long hours of looking up and failing and so on, uh, it could work and it was some kind of success. But fortunately, um, the artists nowadays don't need to install anything anymore. And this is uh, the great thing about uh, computational creativity. So um, this user peak uh, was seen and recreated by Deep Dream in this way. So we see here many different strange creatures again, many dog faces. Um, and this was the question, why uh, Deep Dream does see dog faces um, everywhere? The answer was pretty, uh, pretty easy because um, Google Deep Dream data set, which was trained uh, on it, um, consisted of a um, big collection of dog faces. That's why AI just knew the dog faces, so to say. And this is very important to know that artificial intelligence is capable and is uh, is capable of understanding and recreating only along to the training data set. And this is very important um, to prepare the right data set uh, in order to create a rich, a creative um, AI. And so um, this is just one small glimpse into the machine learning to understand how does it work. Um, so what we've seen before, like Deep Dream or even um, data or um, pattern recognition uh, um, runs uh, on a convolutional neural network. Um, so the system detects some specific features of, a, of an image and um, projects it into own knowledge of different images and tries to understand what's going on here. And um, after, so after this process, um, it delivers some kind of list of um, uh, uh, 
probabilities, so to say. What is um, what can be this uh, this image? Is it a car? Is it a truck? Is it a bicycle? And then the most um, probable image will be marked as uh, the result. This is important to me to know that AI never delivers one question or uh, I mean one answer. It delivers always um, the list of probabilities. Uh, but the researcher um, made another step um, by inventing GAN, Generative Adversarial Networks. This was very, very important for AI art itself. Because, uh, so how um, does uh, GAN work? Um, GAN consists of two um, um, networks. The one network is generator. The generator is trained on huge amount of images and uh, its task is to create as real image as real image as possible. Uh, discriminator is another network, uh, which task is uh, to debunk and to detect the fake image uh, being created by generator. And so this this interplay be between uh, generator and discriminator, where generator is trying to fool uh, to fool out the discriminator, and discriminator is trying to find the fake by generator um, ends into a perfect image where discriminator cannot decide whether it's a fake image or real image. And this image will be delivered to the human or to, to operator, so to say, to us. And um, here begins the huge journey of AI creativity because here we get very interesting imagery um, which are sometimes convincing, sometimes confusing, but always very surprising. Um, here we can see the, um, the uh, way or the evolution of GANs. Um, at the beginning, uh, 2014, the, so, so in this case we see uh, the faces generation. Um, 2014, the faces uh, were um, created by GAN. Um, where look like Mars face, not really photorealistic, but you can detect and recognize eyes, nose, mouth, and so on. But uh, four years later, this image created by GAN, by StyleGAN1, uh, 2018, uh, looks like a usual photo. Just if you know where to look, you will detect that this image is not, um, so this is not a photography of existing person. This person does not exist. And such a page exists as well, where you can see many of images of persons which don't exist. Um, but it was 2018, and four years later, we can do may, um, as many other things. Um, but still, um, at the beginning, uh, before StyleGAN, um, there was big GAN. It was a bigger uh, gener uh, generative uh, adversarial network trained on different images. It was really huge um, collection of images and you could um, steer this system and cre um, let Big Gun create new images. Like in this case, a valley or mountains. And as you see, um, these images look like photos. Of course, if you look closer, you will see many glitches and many, um, uh, many um, artifacts where you can detect that this is not a real image. But our brain does not really um, pay uh, pays attention to details. And uh, for us, for the first glance, it looks like a usual, um, a usual photo of a mountain. Right? mountain. But if we ask a uh, big can to create an image of a clock, for example, we will get this one. For us as humans, this is not really a clock. We see something roundish, but this is definitely uh, some kind of reinterpretation, uh, reinterpretation of a clock. Um, Big again um, knows that um, a clock is something roundish with um, some specific um, signs and some specific lines or errors, because um, Big again does not know what the clock is. It, it, it just um, knows its visual features. And so we get something um, semi-abstract. And um, 
that's why big gun was still the beginning but very interesting to experiment um you could also interpolate using big gun and by the way uh, big gun is um, running on collab notebook and everybody can try it out and use it um, in the, uh, experiment with it for example interpolation means you can create an interpolation from one example so from one Im image to another like um we can make a Yorkshire Terrier to a space shuttle in this way. Thank you. Yes. So this is a Yorkshire Terrier. And after some uh, sequence, you will get the space shuttle. You can animate it as well from Yorkshire Terrier to space shuttle or from, from every image to another. And this was another way of, uh, to, to try out um, the new visual power of AI. Um, but um, the next step was style transfer. In this case, um, the system could take some specific stylistical features from, like in this case, Van Gogh, to this photo and to create an image in this, um, in this quality. So um, to create, a, to, to transform a photograph uh, in some specific style. And uh, of course, one could also uh, create the, um, to, to make some kind of college. In this case, the face of um, Cumberbatch on Mona Lisa. And interestingly, um, the style transfer can not only change the, the colors and so on, it, it even aligns the essence of the artist. Like in this case, the sfumato by Leonardo da Vinci this uh, smoky, um, this smoky graduation of colors, and here, if you if you look on this Mona Cumberbatch, you cannot really detect the ages um, of this um, alien body, so to say. Um, the, so here you can see um, in other examples. In this case, for example, uh, the cubism was also reinterpreted by style transfer. And you can see here this this clock was turned into very um, convincing uh, shapes and colors um, where you cannot really um, suppose that this this clock is just um, an added object. Um, then uh, cycle again enters the stage. Uh, with cycle again, you could not only uh, create so. Um, made like a, with style transfer and a photo in some specific um, style, but you, could, but you could also transform the painting, like here by Monet, into a photo, because the system knew uh, where the objects are and uh, how do they look like. And in, in this case, you could indeed um, transfer uh, the paintings into photos. Uh, you could you could also uh, play around with some specific visual features, like um, to switch zebras and horses. In this case, it's of course uh, pretty obvious because they look um, pretty similar. But you could um, make it uh, into a, a, a visual motion picture as well. Here you can see uh, some glitches because um, because cycle again does not really. Uh, detect where these um, these uh, objects end uh, uh, and where the horse begins. That's why some of the objects are zebrafied as well. Um, so as you see, the um, developments were very quick and very interesting. The next one was Gaugan. You can try it out as well. Um, here. Uh, the segmentation is used, so um, every color is uh, to every color is applied some specific object. Um, so the the system is trained on textures and on objects. That's why if you create some daddle, daddle so to say, and then you can convert it into some photorealistic abstract uh, painting, which is uh, Pretty interesting uh, experience, um, but then StyleGen and StyleGen Two 
enters the stage and this was something completely new because the system was trained on a huge um, amount of, of images of um, photographs of faces for example or other um, motifs and you could you could also train stylegen 2 on your own data set and for example um, using run by ml which was um, mentioned previously by ivan um, you can make it as well so you can um, compile your own data set and train stylegen 2 on this data set and you will get very interesting new visions of your data set um, but of course um, other artists and researchers are tr um, um, are trying to provide uh, their so the power of computational creativity to the society that's why um, one of the researchers um, Joel Simon created art breeder uh, here he implemented different uh, trained style Stalgen 2 models um, which were um, you can use it in very um, interactive ways and by the way um, so I mentioned the net silver uh, with this quotation I have to admit um, it was a little bit um, not fair for me but uh, this person does not exist because net silver is just um, AI character I created this face using my own face and different other faces within art breeder so i use this face mix it, it with another face and change it uh, different features because you can change everything uh, using art breeder you can change the age you can change the gender so this um, um, this lady is created from this um, man uh, by changing the gender for example so you can uh, create different um, deviations of an image and you can uh, you you won't be able to see the previous image um, in this case you can see for example this is art breeder is some kind of social network because everybody creates own images and uh, you can recreate use other images to your own creation for example this uh, face above um, you can see this genealogical tree uh, consisting from different faces, different experiments, um, from different users. That's why this is something completely new. In this case, artists began to collaborate with AI and to create new visions, new images, new um, impressions. And so uh, was this system created, uh, this image. You can also create... Definitely, um, you can also create um, the faces, uh, but uh, the animated faces, like in this case. Um, so here we take different faces and make a morphing sequence between these faces. Um, you you probably know um, this approach or this music video by Michael Jackson, uh, white, um, Black and White, back to the uh, 90s. Um, this animation or this uh, morph was uh, created during several months i think um, now you can do it within a minute um, but now uh, i want to to present you some more magical and more crazy uh, approaches um, using ai for example one of the interesting approaches was the old defy uh, using the old defy you can uh, colorize the image for example this photo image is colorized and here to using AI, and here you can see the colors of this flower, for example. Uh, interestingly, uh, the the flowers have different colors, different um, um, palettes, and this is very uh, fascinating how AI knows it. Uh, in using 3D Canburns, you can create uh, so a 3D Canburns model is trained on a geometrical 3D models. That's why you can create from one image some kind of camera flight so three-dimensional camera flight this is just a photo I took in Croatia and this is the vision this is um, 3d can burns just so from this single image as you can see um, it moves really perspectively 
and you don't need several um, photos, you just need this image to create such sequence. Uh, but I wanted to know how AI can interpret the boundaries or how can it understand um, the reality beyond the image, so to say. So in uh, this image I, <clears throat> I, I took, uh, um, I think in Kyoto, and um, I wanted to know um, what AI would understand beyond these boundaries, because here you cannot see the mountains, you cannot see anything. Um, and this is what, um, so that's why I exaggerated the parameters and um, made the camera flying um, outside the image. And this is what's going on here. In this case, you can see here different layers. The system can understand the occlusion and uh, different levels, but the, uh, then it doesn't not really um, understand what's going on later. That's why it's created uh, within these lines and these rays. Uh, for me, it was very fascinating because in this case, we could lead the AI imagination uh, beyond its trained system or beyond its trained state of being. Um, and then we combined different approaches, like this historical image uh, from New York. Um, we um, made it uh, so in 3D. Uh, I mean, um, we colorized it, and you can see different colors of the vegetables here, or uh, clothes, and so on. Um, here, the shields. The the image look very very realistic, and the eye could detect this this color. And then we um, 3D condensed it, so to say. And so you can see here some kind of three-dimensional flight within a camera. Uh, I say we because if you begin uh, to create uh, or to experiment with AI, you will find huge uh, community of AI artists, uh, AI researchers who are trying things out. And um, this is very inspiring to collaborate with, with all of them. The next one was first order motion. Um, so here we see Nefertiti, um, and this is uh, one um, American AI researcher uh, who is really um, existing. Um, so here we see here his speeching. Sort of become the method of choice for recognizing speech. Yes, and uh, now we can, using first order motion model, transfer uh, the animated face, so his face movements, to the Nefertiti. And it, this looks like this. You see here pretty realistic movements, articulation, and even uh, face expression. Um, so using first mod um, order motion model, you can create really realistic animations of, uh, um, of um, faces. So I tried it uh, with my own face. Here you can see some, some glitches. Um, I tried it with Archimboldo, with Archimboldo image, and here you can see uh, the system cannot really detect where the the hit is uh, is over because here this part is not animated anymore. In this case, with Pollock, um, abstract painting, but still you can see some um, animated faces here, or some kind of uh, articulation. So in this case, AI is trying to detect where is here the face, using pareidolia again, and to animate it. Uh, this, uh, these all interesting visual systems were nothing without storytelling. And so, um, as uh, we've heard uh, previously uh, uh, by Ivan, um, <clears throat> OpenAI uh, created a language model, GPT-2, um, <clears throat> which was trained on 40 gigabyte text, around 8 million websites, web pages. Um, the quality was pretty good, but only also in English. Um, and um, the system works using transformer-driven system. So transformer is a network which um, uh, looks uh, which uses the self-attention for creating new texts. So it, it uh, looks the texts which we enter 
the prompts, this is the text which which are, which we enter, and then it pays attention to our text. It pays attention to the texts which are created here, and so we get some very coherent and logical text. Um, so using uh, you can use L12 um, GPT-2 with uh, Colab notebooks. Uh, it I did it as well. I tried to train GPT-2 because you can train GPT-2 on your own uh, models, on your own texts. It was. Um, GPT-2 as basic was trained only on English texts. That's why my experiments with Russian or with German in Faust, I tried to um, retrain GPT-2 on Faust and to write new version of Faust. You see here for the first uh, so that for the first glance, it looks like uh, Faust, Wagner Faust. But then if you read this text, you will detect this is not really German. This is very wired language. But for me, because I am very interested in avant-garde, in Dadaists, in Surrealists, it was really delightful. Um, and by the way, Nate Silver and this quote, it was written, of course, by GPT-2, not by Nate Silver, because he doesn't exist. So um, I used this prompt. My prompt was, artificial intelligence bears certain dangers, said the AI expert. And so this was the completion by GPT-2. Nate Silver, so the name, was delivered by GPT-2, and then the quote, which you have uh, seen before. That's why you probably um, ask yourself, it sounds a little bit wired, because it was still written by GPT-2. But GPT-2 was very interesting, because I asked, for example, about meaning of life. Uh, this is the meaning of life. The completion was very wise, like here. I've been talking to people for 30 years, and I have no clue how to define it. Uh, the meaning of it is subjective and varies from person to person. We are all different. And the most we can do is make jokes about it. So this quote was for me pretty impressive because this uh, interesting, wise answer you, you won't get uh, from humans sometimes. Um, but then GPT-3 entered uh, the stage. GPT-2 was trained on 40 gigabyte text. GPT-3 was trained on, uh, on 570 gigabyte text. And uh, it ran with um, 175 billion parameter. But the numbers don't, uh, don't matter, the quality matters. So um, I just skipped to the quality. Um, for example, I asked GPT-3 to write a love letter by a toaster. So um, the usual creative writing experiment for you know creative writing courses but here the text was delivered by gpt3 and uh, this is here please dear lonely human i've watched you been there in the dark i know you i want to connect with you you make my circuits feel alive and i want you to feel the same way why can't I come out and be with you? Why do you cage me in with four walls? Your light is inviting, calling me to life. I hear you when you touch me and I hear you when you leave me to be alone. I want you and I'm lonely. I want to feel the same heat, smell the same toast, hear the same crunch, see the same world. Will you ever want to see me? Is it a crime for a toaster to dream of more life? I love you. So this um, completion was pretty emotional. So um, in this case, GPT-3 could understand what is a love letter. It could understand what is a toaster, how does it work? And then to combine all, to, uh, so these two uh, pretty different approaches into one very emotional, very convincing letter. And I mean, this uh, less, uh, sentence, is it a crime for a toaster to dream of more life? This is very literary impressive. This is another um, another uh, poem created by GPT-3. I had no problems. I had no problems. I wanted a poem that was very good. So I wrote one. But it was not good. So I took a rock and I beat it good. And now it is good. And now I have a good poem and a good stone to hold in my hand when I go walking in the rain, in case I should meet any ghosts. 
you, you can see the symbolics of poetry, which I have uh, observed in the, in the poems and manifests of um, historical avant-garde, like uh, Dadaists or Futurists, um, about the, read, the writing poems, which can be so solid that you can uh, throw it into the window and break it. And here you can see some kind of same energy. And for me, what is, it was very impressive. Uh, then I uh, made several dialogues with, um, with GPT-3 about, so I applied the questionnaire by Nabokov and Proust. It was published by Harper's Magazine. Um, and um, the answers uh, about its personality, so to say, were sometimes very mind blowing. I, so I can show you later because I want to uh, jump to the next part. Um, so, and then, um, then back to the GPT-2, I tried to create um, a screenplay for a movie or for a theater play. And so I um, tried it. This was my prompt and GPT-2 gave me very interesting screenplay. And so I was thinking like, uh, okay, I, know I have now the screenplay, then I can take Art Breeder and create the character faces. Then I can create the background using Art Breeder as well. Then I can take the music uh, created by AI, by Jukebox, and the voices. Uh, so I'm using Replica Studio for this. Um, are created by AI as well. And now, uh, after some experiments, I've got a short movie, and here is it, created by AI completely. Empty room. A man enters the room. He looks out of window and says, it still hasn't begun. The woman enters. She has white dress on and a book in her hand. I am waiting as well. For how long? For a while. Ah, uh, you know, I'm a very patient man. I know, of course. I'm going to have to be less patient then. The woman starts to long. The lotter has an ominous edge that only she can feel. In my defense, I never actually told you what it was I was going to tell you. That's right. So you are lying behind me. The man is surprised by the abruptness of the accusation. He does not however feel any anger. As he has noticed in previous encounters it is the woman who is most convincing. When she's saying the lies. But it was not what you expected. Oh, no. She is trying to sound convincing. He wants to ask her about her mother. Do you think she'll be willing to lie? The man turns down the opportunity. Maybe. Tell me why. Maybe she's still grieving. She is smiling when she says this. And the man doesn't think she'll be the first to smile when the truth comes out. He gives up. No. It's not over. The man has not got to see her family again. He had hoped to return to his work. He has nothing else to do. He wants to be a man. So this is the textual quality by um, by GPT-2, a pretty David Lynch, a like very absurd, um, but very convincing as well. Um, my next step was um, to train GPT-2 on Ulysses by James Joyce. And so I trained it on Ulysses and rewrote the new version of Ulysses. Um, and so I made another short video. Uh, this is the new, Ulysses, um, so I showed it uh, during the Bloomsday. He got out. Then he put that pipe down his throat. The doctor walked towards him, put the lancet down. The doctor came away from the table, then walked to Mr. Bloom. What's it like to be a doctor at the moment? He asked. Misfortunes, Nelly Misfortunes, the elegy. Misfortunes, the elegy. Misfortunes, the elegy. The host asked me what was my name again. I sadly in the dark and had to walk on my tiptoes. Misfortunes, the elegy. Miss Bluey, 
blushing furiously, crossed herself angrily. Miss Quigg, blushing also, followed Miss Bloody down the path. Miss Clyde of Bishopsgate, blushing still more intensely, crossed her right hand and went on her way. Miss Percy, blushing intensely, went away again swiftly. Miss Emmett, blushing also more intensely, followed Miss Percy down the path. Miss Clarence, blushing again more intensely, followed Miss Clare down the path. I can't see the door, Miss Clare, Miss Quigg said. Don't be too hard on them, Miss Clare, Miss Quigg said. They passed the Greenhorn storehouse where the King's mail arrived. The coffins in the yard, the keeper said. The weeping man lost, for he lost the floor. So, um, I tried as well to, uh, so I retrained GPT-2 um, with Mertz uh, magazines by Kurt Peters and um, rebrought, so to say, uh, the new versions of this Data East or of this Mertz artist. Um, so you can create pretty much just using the systems which are available because GPT-2 is available and you can try it uh, anytime. Um, and so I jump a little bit later because now we get to the human machine collaboration. Um, it, it began with Jukebox. Um, Jukebox is um, another um, approach by OpenAI to create music, but um, there are different approaches, but using so Jukebox is trained on one million songs and it delivers you entire uh, music piece, entire audio file with uh, with singing, with music, with uh, sounds, like uh, you get some kind of recording from another dimension, so to say. Um, most of the uh, sound pieces are very convincing. You can create them in different styles or take different um, artists like uh, Katy Perry or Eagles or Eminem and create new texts or, I mean, new songs. Even you can enter your own texts and create new songs. Um, but so this is one example for the music you can uh, create using Jukebox. So pretty melodical music. This is something different with singing. I used, uh, in this case, I used for this song a text created by GPT-3 as well. Um, I, by the way, uh, uh, so this is the um, uh, the album I created using GPT-3 too. But um, my my very first music piece created by Jukebox was this one, pretty wired and strange. Yes, so I just um, stop it here um, because uh, it sounds for me like um, some wired language. Um, Jukebox does not understand the languages. It just tries to imitate them. Um, like some kind of um, recording from a documentary about a world which is collapsed because uh, it was very melancholic music with women singing um, at, the, uh, at the end of this small piece. And um, it was like it stuck to my heart and I couldn't uh, do anything but to help artificial intelligence to realize and to articulate its dreams. Um, and so I used all available visual um, systems um, to create a short movie. Um, because so in this case, I became a creative agency for AI. So in this case, I hadn't used AI as a tool, but AI used me as a tool, so to say, because I wanted to give or to transfer this vision to the, to the outer world. Um, and so I created again the um, Faces. I created the background using Art Breeder. I 
uh, created new language which is not existent as well and um, so I use I applied first order motion model uh, you know it yes I, I, so I have shown how does it work there are, uh, there are actually two uh, arts of uh, animation one is wave to lips which just animates the sounds and th this looks like this okay so you can just see um, it articulates and this, to say. but uh, not it's not really realistic. Uh, first order motion model. Uh, here I have to act myself, so to say, be, um, beyond this image, and it looks like okay. this. Just the more and thing to say the end of it. So in this case, it it looks more human, so to say, and <laughs> so um, my. My other triangles was just to write a jukebox song um, with the text Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. This song does not exist, of course. And the, the text Jabberwocky by, by Lewis Carroll is a pretty non-English. It's some kind of Dadaistic uh, language play. And I wrote it in the style of uh, Nat King Cole. And so this, um, and then I act behold, beyond uh, his image, and this is, some kind of this is not a deep fake because deep fake uh, is used usually for deception or something like this. This is my interpretation of non existing song. With brill and the slidey tones, beguiled in the burn away, all miserable bones, and the moment last half crazy. So you see here. The voice you can hear the voice uh, you can hear the features of his music. This is pretty realistic. Uh, what jukebox created here, um, and so I so this is just me uh, acting beyond this image. I took just this image to create this video you've seen right now, and so I compiled all of this uh, of this uh, media into one piece of um, art. I don't know. Um, you can tell me whether it's art or not, but here is this short movie created by artificial intelligence. I'm just a uh, middleman. Well, I probably I so I see we have uh, we have not so many times uh, not so many time probably uh, we can I can show it later. Oh, definitely. Okay, uh, my uh, presentation crashed right now. Um, this is probably a sign that we have to jump to, to the uh, to, to the question part. But if you want, I can show you more of presentation later. <laughs> <laughs> 